Please be joined now by the general manager of the Calgary Flames, Brad Treliving. Brad, I want to talk about Glenn Gullitson uh, for a couple of moments. His comments after the Edmonton game on the weekend saying, at this point, we need to relook at everything. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it was a humbling night, obviously. Um, and, and not the performance uh, or I think the play that's indicative of what we're capable of. Uh, but any time that you can come through a game like that or go through a game like that, um, if you're not looking at everything, you're, 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 you're doing your team and yourself a disservice. So um, the, the, the good news, if there is, in this league is you, you play. You don't have to wait a long time to play your next game. So I know since, since Saturday night, the coaches have, have done a lot of uh, look on video, have done, spent a lot of time talking to the players, and, uh, and now the, the, the test will be how we perform tonight. I want to ask you about your defense as well. Giordano and Hamilton have been outstanding together. We see Brody and Weidman playing well together as well. As the NHL sort of moves towards a right-left combo on the point that's very much in vogue, do you find at this point, considering how much we've talked about Giordano and Brody together, that maybe they're just better served apart on your blue line? Well, it's a, it's a great discussion because we've seen the body of work with, with Gio and Brody together is, is outstanding. Um, and so one school of thought is you put them together and you play them 30 minutes a night and you got half the game taken care of. Uh, obviously, when you look at, at moving them apart, and you're right, Gio and, and Dougie have done a real good job together, is to give more depth on the blue line. I do like the fact, now, now TJ is probably a little bit unique in the sense that he can play both sides equally well. Um, he played the right side for a long time, he's very comfortable there. Um, but it does limit you in some cases. TJ is sort of the exception rather than the rule. He passes the puck so well in the backhand. But you do cut off half the ice. It's a difficult, you, you, your vision, you come around the net on a breakout, um, you're on your backhand when you're going on your strong side. Um, you get a puck on the blue line, you've got to go across your body to make a play. So there is parts of the game and parts of the ice that are cut off. Um, I think the, the success that Gio and Dougie have had, it's given us more depth. Um, being able to, to have Gio and Brody on the ice separately um, and covering more minutes. So I think the way we've gone here the last little bit uh, is probably the way we, in, in the foreseeable future, but that's always an option to put them back together as it's worked very well previously. Jordan and Hamilton on the ice when the 3M line is on with them, nobody else touches the puck. It seems as if your flames have, have struck gold there. Have to ask about penalties as well, and I think a lot of people are scratching their heads about it. I'm sure you have as well. How does a team go from 30th overall to first overall inside of one season when it comes to penalties. Some have pointed out you know, Dennis Weidman and the situation last year with Don Henderson. I'm not going to ask about a Weidman tax, but how do you explain going from 30th to first? Well, first of all, we try not, we're not looking at any sniper in the bush. Um, <laughs> um, I think penalties is, it's, it's with any team. If you, if you, first of all, you're not going to have, it's a, it's a non recipe for success. Uh, um, or it's a recipe for non-success is probably a better way of putting it. You can't continuously be in the box in this league. Uh, many nights the margin for error is so slim that special teams decides a lot, of, a lot of games and the more you're in the box the less advantage you're giving yourself to have success. So we look at it internally and we've got to do a better job. We ask our guys to play hard, we ask them to play on the edge. Um, I think we've got a very competitive group. Uh, we've got players that push the line, but they've got to find a way to, to, to balance that and stay on the right side of the line. Um, so it's obviously something that's been a concern for the last, uh, for the last year, especially coming into this season. Uh, we want to continue to be an aggressive team, um, compete on pucks, but find a way to stay out of the box. It's just, it's, like I said, you, you, you won't have success doing it any other way. Mentioned the 3M line a couple of moments ago. Michael Backlund, still one of the best kept secrets in the NHL. Michael Froelich and Matthew Kachuk. I can remember your group at the draft in Buffalo trying to casually walk up to the stage when he was available, but I can see that most of you wanted to run just so you could say his name. Your thoughts on him so far this season? Well, he's, he's, he's definitely outkicked the coverage for me in terms of what I expected in his first year. Um, you know, those that saw Matthew play as a junior and even the last couple of years coming up through the U.S. program and then last year in London, you knew that he was a, a talented young, young guy and... Um, a competitive guy and, and you know, plays that hard-nosed game. But I think that his skill level and his brain for the game is probably something that doesn't get talked enough about. He thinks the game at a high level. He's able to play with those players. And those are, those are two really good players, um, two solid NHL players. But I think Matthew has, has done more than just ride shotgun on that line. I think he pulls them into games a lot of nights. Uh, um, he goes and plays in the areas that are real difficult to play in. Um, he's making plays. and, and 
probably the biggest surprise for me is the trust that he's earned from coaches early on in the season in a defensive role. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for protecting a lead or there's something, you, somebody to get a puck out or, or, or be strong on the wall. Uh, Glenn has, has found a lot of confidence in, in Matthew right from day one. So those are, those are the things for me. He's come in, he's made a real statement in his rookie year, but as we say with all our players, these next 30 odd games are important for us and we need him to continue to, to progress. Quickly, takes a lot of penalties, but draws more, true or false? True, true. We'd like him to tone down. He's another <laughs> one of those players that, you know, you, he, he's a unique player. That, 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 that edge that he has, you don't want to damper that, but he's got to make sure he's on the right side of things more often than not. Um, but he, when you look at it, he's a, he's a plus positive. He draws as many or more than he takes. Brad, thanks so much for this. Thanks, Jeff.